Hey, Ashley, is Bill on or are we just going to do this from here? Um, Bill's not going to be here, so we're just going to rock and roll like this. Okay. Guess I'll just go ahead and take questions. Hope everybody had a nice Easter. Scooter, looks like you were first in line. Okay, before you get into everything else, if you could just talk about uh, Tuesday night's game and what you're looking for, bounce back, whatever. Well, um, obviously the, the biggest thing is to get back on the horse and hopefully get a win. You know, just want to have something positive happen for the guys and um, – you know, playing another really good in-state team that uh, went to Southeastern this weekend and had a couple of good wins. We know how good Southeastern is. And they won the first two games of the series, which uh, you got to have a pretty good team to do that. So we know we're going to have our hands full. they got a really veteran team. Seems like their shortstop has been there forever. Um, I think uh, Justin Hill does a really, really good job as their coach. And uh, – they always seem to play us really tough. So we need to have a good day of practice today and focus on a, on playing McNeese. Um, obviously, a lot of attention is on our record in our conference and can't do anything about that tomorrow night. So we'll, all we can do is play McNeese State and hopefully gain some confidence back and, and hopefully uh, end up the night scoring more runs in them and get ready to go to Lexington and, and get back on the horse for the SEC and, and start to have some, some positive things happen there. We're going to start uh, Garrett Edwards tomorrow night. Uh, I'm sure we'll be piecing it together with several pitchers. Um, but uh, he's going he's gonna to start the ball game, see how that looks. Paula, do you have the test results back from Jade on Jaden? And if so, what did they reveal? Uh, I have not talked to Jaden yet, and nor have I talked to the doctor yet. So I don't know exactly what the situation is. Um, so I, I really can't comment on it, on it yet, Wilson, until I get a chance to talk directly. But the uh, early report is not very positive. Um, but I, But until I talk to the doctor and to Jaden, I really can't comment specifically. So uh, I'm gonna have to hold off until I get a chance to talk to both of them. A follow up on that there real quick. Uh, would there still be, you know, would there being uncertainty around him, does that affect what y'all do pitching wise uh, yeah. tomorrow and like starting Garrett and that kind of thing as you head into the weekend, maybe not being able to have him? Yeah, I would say Jaden is definitely out for the weekend. And so, um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, the, the starting Garrett in the Tuesday game is not necessarily uh, a reflection on what our plans are for this weekend. Um, I think the idea to start Garrett is to get him back on the horse right away and see how it looks, you know, let him go through a starter's routine and, and uh, start a ball game in case that's something that we want to look at down the road, whether it be this weekend or in the future but we haven't decided what we're going to do with this weekend yet, except probably move AJ Labus to Saturday. Not, not sure what we'll do on Sunday. Coach, so, you know, obviously a lot has, has been made about just kind of the early, you know, inconsistencies with the offense. Um, just, I guess, where would you assess where the offense is? Um, yeah, obviously you guys went against two really – uh, great pitchers on uh, Thursday and Friday, but just, you know, Saturday to come back and to you know, kind of be there right at the end, but just not have it break your way. I mean, just where, where, where are the, where are the hitters headspace is at now, I guess, you know, heading into, you know, a very critical week for you guys. Yeah, it's really hard to say Glenn, you know, um, you know, with they, those kids work so hard and Eddie works so hard with them. Um, but, you know, getting four hits a game, which is what we did this week, and it's, it's really hard to mount much offense when you're only getting four hits in a ball game, obviously. Uh, 
it's very understandable when you run up against, you know, two guys like Rocker and, and Leiter. Those guys have done that with to a lot of people. I mean, Leiter only had given up seven hits in six previous starts for the season, and we got four hits off of them. Um, you know, the encouraging thing, I guess, if you want to say it's encouraging, I think one night, one night we had all four hits were by true freshmen. Um, uh, you know, yay for small victories. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously, you know, to, to, to mount any kind of uh, significant offense, you're going to have to do more than that. Uh, you know, Saturday's game, the final game of the series, Obviously, we had a chance there in the last inning. Uh, we loaded the bases with two walks and a hit batter. You know, the, the kid they brought in was throwing the ball exceptionally hard. He was up to 97 miles an hour. Um, you know, Gavin Dugas, you know, had a really good at bat. Fell behind in the count and battled like crazy. And, uh, you know, ended up putting the ball in play. It, it you know, resulted in a sacrifice fly. Unfortunately, we're down by two. You know, Bianco had some good base running and was able to advance to third base, but, you know, we weren't able to to get the last hit there to tie the ball game, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, so we ended up losing by a run, which I guess if you count them, that was our third one-run loss. So, you know, out of our eight losses, I think we've had three one-run losses and two two-run losses. You've heard me say it a million times, you know, your season gets defined by how you do in the one run and two run games. So, you know, I think, you know, in a lot of ways we've been competitive, but in another, in other ways, we're not getting it done in the, in the close games, which is what, you, what you have to do. And, um, you know, but we've, you know, we've, we're, we're through three really tough opponents and, and now, you know, not that it gets easier at all, but, it's not going to be any more difficult than it's been in these first three weekends. That's for sure. Those, those three teams that we've played, you know, three of the top teams in the country and, and um, we just got to, you know, roll up our sleeves and keep working and, you know, take it one game at a time and chip away. And that's, that's, what, that's what we're going to keep doing. Coach at this point, when you in practice, after these games, are you seeing the effect of, of these tough times on the kids? Like, what's the psyche of this team right now in your mind? Matt, it's, it's hard to just, you know, define that, you know, because each individual player is different, um, you know, but it's, it's my job to keep their chins up and keep them enthused and, and thinking positive and enjoying the game and, it's hard to enjoy it when you're not having a lot of success. And uh, I mean, it, it's easy to sit back and say, let's have fun out there. But, you know, when you put in a lot of work and our players put in a lot of work, they, you know, it's a, they, it's a very time consuming thing and they work very hard and you want to reap the benefits of that hard work. And that's what we're used to having here at LSU. And when you, you know, when you look at, the scoreboard at the end of the game, the other team has scored one more run than you, or you lost the ball game. It's, it's hard to, to walk away from the park and say, boy, that was a lot of fun today. You know, it's just the nature of it. That's why winning is so important. It, it gives credibility to you, to what you preach to them as a coach and it makes all the hard work feel that it was, it was worth it. So, you know, when, when, the hard work is put in and, and the result at the end of the day is not there. It's certainly going to affect, you know, the, the psyche of the player. So, you know, today we'll, we'll meet with the guys. We'll talk to them a lot. We'll try to keep them, you know, thinking positive. And, and I'll explain to them that, you know, this, this is what athletics is. It's a microcosm of, of life. And, you know, you're going to get knocked down a lot in life. And, you know, you have two choices. You can lay there and be defeated or you can get back up as hard as it is and keep fighting. And um, I would hope that our players will heed the advice of their coach and keep fighting. And if you do that, then eventually 
you'll you'll have good things happen to you. And um, you know, beginning with tomorrow night, hopefully we'll have something good happen to us, and we'll carry that into this weekend. And you know, you chip away, you chip away. You know, you can't win eight games in one day. You just got to do it day by day, day by day, day by day, and you know, just kind of reset your goals and and take it one day at a time and and be proud of the of the accomplishments that you have and 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 salvage something and you know it's it's a uh, it's not easy these are the these are the times that try men's souls that's for sure coach, coach where uh, where would you where in, in you as a coach or as an individual where where would you rank this or even do you have anything to compare this from previous seasons that weren't as successful or up to the LSU standard of performance? Oh, I've, I've been in coaching for 39 years, Matt. I've had lots of down moments in my life as a coach. So I can't compare it to, I'm not going to go back and dwell on, on, you know, bad years or bad experiences, you know, I, I can't compare it to anything. Um, I just deal with what we're dealing with now. And, and uh, you know, we can't do anything about yesterday. We, all we can do about is today, you know, we start with practice today and, and emphasize the little things at practice and do, do your things properly today and, and, if you have the self-discipline and the focus on doing the little things correct today, then it'll translate into success tomorrow when we play McNeese. And that's how, that's how I have to approach it. There's, there's just no other way to do it. You start dwelling on all the negative things this year or that year, or whatever, you know, it, it just, you fill, you fill your head with so many negative thoughts that it just overwhelms you. And that, doesn't accomplish anything like I said you know life is filled filled with trials and tribulations and these kids are going through something right now that as difficult as it is to endure it'll help them grow as people and they will eventually become tougher they'll become more confident that they can handle anything that that life challenges them with as they go through life and it's, it's not fun to go through, but ultimately they'll endure and become better people for it. Coach, you, um, you talked a minute ago about, you said Garrett Edwards is going to be the starter tomorrow. Is there a reason you're moving away from Will Helmers in that role? Is no. there anything specific or you just wanted to shake things up? No, I just want Garrett Edwards to go through the starters routine tomorrow and see what, see what it looks like to see him start a game. Will will be the first guy out of the bullpen following Garrett. Yeah, Will's done a great job for us, and this is not a reflection on him at all. I just want to see if if we decide, you know, to to um, use Garrett as a weekend starter to give him the experience of starting a game in the midweek. He hasn't started a game since he started against UL earlier in the year. Hey, Coach. Um, speaking about moving forward and everything. Uh, Somebody may roll their eyes for me asking you this, but doesn't it just take one guy to hit a three-run homer or something like that to happen and everything can just change on one play and go into a, a different direction? I know you're one and eight right now, but to be honest, people don't talk about winning the SEC around here anyway. So, I mean, it's all about trying to be your best in May and June, right? So is that, I mean, it's still all, it's still not all in front of you, but a lot is in front of you. Yeah, well, I don't roll my eyes, Shock. I, uh, I think... I've been around long enough to know that that that's that's you know you never point the finger at any one player or you know it's a collective effort by the entire team and the coaching staff and you know all those things happen but the reality is you win games when players do extraordinary things and sometimes one player stepping up and one swing of the bat changes the entire uh, momentum of a team. Um, you know, I talk a lot about the 2008 season when we were down and out and everybody had counted us out in a base hit by DJ LeMayu with two outs in the eighth inning at Tulane on a Tuesday night changed the, the fortunes of an entire season. And, uh, 
um, you know, I don't know who's going to get that hit for us. Many guys have had an opportunity to do it and, you know, the opportunity was there and, and, and maybe it didn't happen. And I'm not blaming anybody, but we just never know when it's going to happen, but ultimately somebody will hopefully do that for us. And, and it changes the, the, the whole atmosphere around the team. It loosens everybody up and it, it comes at a critical time. It might be a hit. It might be a pitch. It might be a play. It might be a base running maneuver. And uh, you don't know when it's going to happen. Um, and, you know, I mean, it, you, you, you can't predict it. You can't even coach it. It just happens. And it takes special players. It takes, you know, somebody seizing the moment and it, and it will happen. I, and I have to believe it. And you just keep encouraging the kids and, and hopefully somebody will, will rise up at a, at a critical moment and that will happen. No, I keep visualizing it, you know, if, if, you know, I kept thinking that, you know, Dylan Cruz was going to get a pitch to hit and hit a three run homer in the ninth inning the other night, but instead he drew a walk, you know, and then I envisioned Gavin Dugas was going to hit one out. Well, he hit a sacrifice fly and, you know, it didn't ha quite happen, but, you know, you just keep thinking it's going to happen. And one of these days, one of these players is going to, come through with one and, and it's going to feel really good when it does. Coach, you talked about um, McNeese, you know, playing who they played this past weekend, but what really stands out about their lineup when you look one through nine, I think they put up nine runs um, over the weekend in the last game. So what stands out about their lineup that can be dangerous to deal with? Very experienced. They got a very left-handed hitting dominant lineup and they're very experienced. Yeah. They won't be intimidated coming into Alec box stadium. That's for sure. They're, they're very confident, older team. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to work really hard tomorrow night. We're going to have to pitch real well. Excuse me. We're going to have to pitch well, and we're going to have to score some runs too. So they're gonna, they're, they're, it's going to be a tough ball game tomorrow night. Paul, there was uh, something uh, Kendall Rogers reported earlier about the NCAA having – the predetermined sites for the postseason. Are y'all going to submit a bid for one of those or have you not decided yet? I, I didn't know anything about that, Wilson. I haven't seen that tweet. So that's news to me. I haven't talked to anybody about it. So I, I wouldn't even know how to respond. It's to, first I heard about it is just now from you. Shows what an awesome reporter you are. You're on top of things. No, I, I just read Kendall's tweet about it. That was all. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a, another question if I could. Um, Gavin said that the night before his grand slam against Louisiana Tech that you had a conversation with him and that it was pretty motivating for him to hear from you then. What did you want to say to him there? And, and do you, why might it have kind of helped him, you know, sort of finally relax and then have that hit the next day? I don't like to share my conversations with players. <laughs> especially when they're somewhat pointed, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I challenged him. Let's just leave it that way, okay? I love Gavin, and he's a wonderful kid. He's the kind of young man that you hope uh, your daughter brings home one day to meet, meet you know. He's, he's everything that, uh, that's good in humanity, let's put it that way. He's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person in every way, shape, and form, and... Uh, very intelligent, works hard, loves the game. Um, I think he used to have an issue where he tried to think too much instead of just letting his natural athletic ability take over. And I just kind of reminded him that day that not to think too much and to be a little bit more aggressive. And I think he took it to heart that next day. Chad, one more for you. Uh, we had an LSU fan who was upset with the media that nobody asked you about uh, Kay Doty getting that home run off the of lighter. I know the score was kind of out of hand, but she wanted to point out how positive that was that the guy hadn't given up a home run all year or whatever, and Kay was the one that, that broke it up. And, uh, shot. Who was upset with you? Just the fan wanted to, you know, say, why didn't anyone ask Coach Maneri about Doty's home run against lighter? uh the other night the first one he gave up all year right stuff like that yeah well <laughs> i don't know what to say about it 
<laughs> Honestly, yeah. I think the score is nine to one when it happened, wasn't it? Well, that's kind of what I said. But anyway, yeah. I'll well, you through it. You satisfied the fan now. Oh. You asked about it. <laughs> Are there any more questions? I have uh, just one more. Uh, Paul, I know you've talked a good bit about kind of sort of where y'all go from here, but is there anything that y'all do as coaches when things kind of get down like this? So do you try to watch more film or do you sort of tweak something or do you try to kind of more stay the course? What's your approach when the season's where it is right now at the halfway point and you've still got a lot of baseball to play? Well, Wilson, I think you made a very good point there. We're exactly at the halfway point. Um, well, there's only going to be a 55 game schedule by virtue of the uh, cancellation with Tulane. So we have 27 games remaining. So that's, that's kind of the message to the players today is, okay, we're at the midway point. Now let's, let's see what we can do with the rest of the way. We've, we've obviously dug ourselves a hole in the SEC and uh, it's a big hole and there's no denying that. And we're not going to make up, you know, 10 games in one weekend or one day. So let's just take it one game at a time and let's just, let's just, see what we can do in the second half. You know, let's forget about what's happened in these first three weekends and let's just, you know, take it one day at a time this weekend against Kentucky and, and let's experience some success and let's move through the rest of the schedule and, and see how high we can finish. And, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, you're constantly thinking about your lineup and what, what gives you the best chance. We will, we are gonna have Giovanni back tomorrow night and uh, so we'll insert him into the starting lineup. Um, uh, probably, you know, make a couple little slight adjustments again with the lineup. Um, I think we're going to probably pretty much focus on using uh, Fontenot and, and, and um, Floyd at the end of the games. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we're going to look at Edwards more as uh, at the beginning and that's, you know, we'll see about whether or not, you know, where, where we'll use him. But I think, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, once we get to the sixth inning on, if we have a chance to win, I think it'll be primarily Fontenot and Floyd at that point. And, um, you know, I think a lot just, you know, continuing to evaluate the personnel situation and, and, uh, and just keep, you know, focusing more on our personnel more than, than the other guys, you know, and seeing what we can do to, to play the very, very best baseball that we can. Is that all? Thank y'all so much. Okay. Thank you, coach. Thank y'all.